Hi there, and welcome to my presentation on cardiac afterload. So I want to talk about the topic of cardiac afterload. So what is cardiac afterload? So basically, it's the work required by the heart to move blood into systemic circulation. And you can actually replace the word heart with blood ventricle. You could be even more specific and say the blood ventricle is responsible for this. Afterload is comprised of three main elements. The first being ejection, but also pressure and resistance. Let's go back to ejection. So we know the left ventricle ejects blood into systemic circulation, but how does pressure play a role in all this? So in order to pl pump blood effectively, the heart has to match the pressure being exerted by the body's network of arteries, capillaries, and veins. Otherwise, blood stays in the heart. Resistance. So the sum of the pressures that I just mentioned that are exerted by the arteries, capillaries, and veins that the heart has to overcome in order to actually perfuse the systemic tissues is known as total peripheral resistance, or TPR. So I wanted to present another way to look at afterload. So here's another way. I'm going to show you here. We're going to use an equation. So this equation, don't be scared. I'm going to break it down for you. And it's a nice little relationship here. So let's start by looking here. Afterload equals tension divided by thickness. So tension is actually two variables. So to that tension, you can actually branch it out into two, and I'm going to go over those two now. The first is ventricular radius, which is the space created by the dilation of the ventricle wall, and ventricular pressure. So ventricular pressure, for a real-world kind of tie-in, during ejection is indicated by systole, or aka the top number when you get your blood pressure read at the doctor's office. Having high ventricular pressure is not desirable, and hopefully you'll understand a little bit more of the reasoning behind that here after this video. So now the bottom term, thickness. So thickness is the actual thickness of the ventricle wall. So heart disease or other medical problems can cause the left ventricle wall to get stiff and inelastic it does become less compliant over time in situations like that. This is what I've kind of labeled bad thickness. It's not good. It can lead to heart failure, congestive heart failure, or just plain poor functioning of the heart itself. Now, on the other side, the flip side of the coin, exercise can cause the left ventricle walls to get thicker too, but in a good way. So if you're confused by that, there's good thickness, there's bad thickness. And that, the subject of exercise and how that actually causes the heart to grow in a good way is beyond the scope of this video. I'm actually going to create another video for it in the future. But just know that a fit heart is a stronger pump and a more compliant pump. I should have put pump in there, but it's more elastic. So, okay, okay. So let's put some examples together. So I always, I love examples. Let's tie some stuff together here. Let's see if I can help you out. So after, let's see an, an example where afterload increases or afterload decreases, right? So let's just kind of delve into this. So in this situation, let's say that the person has an enlarged left ventricle, which, as we know, is stiff and inelastic. It's bad. Let's also say that they have a larger radius, you know, a, a radius or the space between the ventricle walls inside left ventricle. And so sometimes in disease states, blood will stay in the left ventricle, even though the heart tries to push blood out. This forces the heart to hold more blood when it shouldn't. Thus, the space between the walls of the ventricle and the radius increase because blood pools. So one of the reasons why that might happen is because of increased pressure demands. Clogged arteries. Oh, excuse me. Let me go back. I didn't read the rest of this. So clogged arteries will narrow the highways where blood travels, causing the heart to push harder, so it keeps trying and trying and trying to push blood where it wants to go, 
to get blood through, but it can't. So sometimes blood will actually back up into the heart. Not good. So let me break this down here for you. So we know that afterload is the equivalent of tension divided by thickness. Tension is actually comprised of radius size times ventricular pressure, okay, divided by thickness, which thickness is just ventricle wall size, okay. Now, I have these arrows the same size here, and you can think of this as like one divided by one in equivalent situation. These guys cancel, and I did this just for an illustrative purpose, okay. It doesn't really happen like that, but it makes it easier to kind of understand. So what are we left with? So in this situation, I kind of came up with someone who had maybe really bad or really clogged arteries, and uh, they have a very high ventricular pressure uh, variable. So that's why I, didn't, I indicated that the arrow is really big. So what's left over is an overall increase because a bigger arrow or a large number divided by a smaller number is always going to be big. Um, so afterload in this case increases. So let's go over quickly, because I'm running out of time here, to a situation where afterload decreases. So let's cover this up. An enlarged left ventricle from cardiac remodeling from exercise. So this person is an exerciser. They have been, let's say, running for a long time or lifting weights or something like that. So they have cardiac remodeling. They have good enlargement. They also have a smaller radius, which is in stark contrast to the previous example. Because of hypertrophied ventricle walls will create smaller filling radius. A smaller filling radius. So I know that sounds confusing. Just get through your head that a fit, strong, healthy heart when you exercise, you're actually going to create a situation where you're going to have a smaller filling radius, which is desirable. And you're going to have decreased pressure demands because you have more compliant blood vessels, no inflammation, no clogging. You're one, health, you're one healthy person. So let's look at our example here. So same thing as before. Afterload is the equivalent of tension divided by thickness, radius size times ventricular pr ventricle pressure. So in this situation, because we have a decreased radius size and a decreased ventricle pr ventricular pressure, but an overall net increase in thickness, so a smaller number or a smaller set of variables divided by a larger variable, or you know one times one divided by two, we could just use a number, right? So that's going to be smaller, one half compared to our previous example, two, just using numbers, let me skip through here, is going to result in an afterload decrease. So I'm out of time, and I just want to say thank you for watching. And if any of this was confusing, I encourage you to feel free to ask questions, comment, and of course, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, please subscribe. And if you feel like someone could benefit from watching this like you did, please feel free to share. Thank you very much and have a great day.